A forward rate agreement is an over-the-counter contract with a fixed interest rate that will apply to borrowing or lending a certain amount during a specified future time period. Now, let's talk about why someone might use a forward rate agreement. So let's say, and looking at this timeline down here, we can see that we have time in years, zero being today. Let's say that I'm a large company, and I know that as of today, I'm going to need to borrow $100 million two years from now. So that's when my loan that I'm borrowing at would begin, and I need a hundred million dollars. But I'm only going to need it for six months. So that means two and a half years from today is when that loan would expire. So I'm planning on borrowing for six months in this period of time. One thing that I could do is I could just go through my normal course of business, and just wait two years, let time pass into the future until it gets to two years from now. Then at two years from now, I could just take out a six month loan from my bank at whatever the interest rate is at that time. And that's fine, that could work. But the problem with that is I would be taking a lot of interest rate risk. So many things could happen in that two year period that I'm waiting where interest rates could rise which would be bad for me because now I would have to borrow money at a much higher rate. So one thing I could do to prevent myself from taking on that interest rate risk is lock into a forward rate agreement today. So let's talk about how that might work. So let's say that, you know, interest rates are changing in the market, going up and down, etc., And then Based on where interest rates are and wherever the market is pricing in, I can go and look at um, futures contracts based on interest rates and see what is the forward rate for two years from today for six months. That information should be publicly available. And I can go out and see that um, at this time, there should be a futures rate at 5.8% that I can lock in two years from today with a six month term. So I can guarantee today that I can get my $100 million funded at 5.8%. Now, how this would work is I would go and find a counterparty like a bank, and I would get into a forward rate agreement with them. And I would say, I'm going to pay 5.8%. So I'm paying the fixed side, and I will technically be receiving the floating side, which means Whatever happens generally with these interest rates as time changes, let's say goes like this, that means at this time, let's say they're 5%, I'm going to owe the bank a contract that basically I'm paying them 5.8%, whereas they're only paying me 5% back for this six month period of time which means that I'm going to owe them money because I have to pay them more than they have to pay me. Whereas we could have ended up in a situation where let's say interest rates had risen up to 7%. In that case, I only have to pay the bank 5.8%, whereas they have to pay me that 7%. And now I'm the one with the positive value on the side of the forward rate agreement. Now let's talk about how we can go and value the forward rate agreement um, somewhere in this period of time while we're waiting for it to expire. And, and one thing I would point out is that at initiation, typically the forward rate is priced at this, let's say this 5.8% so that the value is always equal to zero when you initiate the contract based on arbitrage free principles. So let's go into valuing what the value of this might be uh, six months into the future. In order to see how the value of a forward rate agreement changes over time, we need to observe how the interest rate associated with that contract changes over time. Now, let me give you an example. So I'm gonna draw a line real quick. Everything above that black line is what we were looking at in the example on the previous screen. So we knew today that two years into the future, we were going to need to borrow uh, $100 million. 
uh, for six months. And at that time, the forward rate associated with that uh, time period was 5.8%. So we locked that forward rate agreement in with those terms. The value at the time that we locked it in was zero because we just locked it in at the market forward rate. Now, six months have actually passed into the future. And now we're in this scenario too. And this is today. And what was two years from now, six months ago, is now only a year and a half from now. And what was two and a half years from now, six months ago, is now only two years from now. And we can see that this forward rate associated with this time period is now 5%. So we locked it in at 5.8%, but it went down to 5%. What's the value of our uh, forward rate agreement? Now, we can find that out using this formula right here that's pretty intuitive and I'll explain why it's intuitive. So the value of a forward rate agreement is equal to the principal, which is just going to be our 100 million, multiplied by that floating rate, which is the one that's changing over time of 5%, minus the rate that we fixed, which was that 5.8%, and you can already tell here that this expression is going to be a negative value. And that's because for us, we locked in that we would pay this 5.8%. The other side would pay that 5%. So now we're receiving an amount that's lower than what we agreed to pay. So when we went uh, long in the contract, we actually are harmed or we lose value on our FRA if the interest rates in the market go up. Now, if we wanted to find the value of this FRA for the other side of the contract, so the bank that was our counterparty, all we would need to do is switch around these two in this formula and we would have their uh, value of the FRA. And so it's a zero sum game. Whatever one side gains, the other side loses. So let's keep going. Now we need to multiply by the total time that the contract is outstanding. So this is just time two of two minus time one, which is 1.5. So really what this is just telling us is that this is a six month or a half of a year contract. And so this whole part of this formula, what we just talked about here, this is really the cash flow, the expected cash flow. And we're expecting to receive that cash flow around this time too. And so we've already calculated what our expected cash flow is, but now what if we needed to figure out what was the present value of that cash flow today? Well, that's what this component of the formula is. It's just taking the present value of the expected cash flow. And this works for most derivative types of problems if you think about it this way. So we're going to take E, to the negative risk-free rate, which for this example, we can just say that it's uh, 4%, so a negative 4% times uh, T2, which is just the two years. So we're just discounting this cash flow back two years at a rate of 4%, assuming continuous compounding. Whenever you see E, you're just assuming continuous compounding. And we figure out that our value on this uh, forward rate agreement for our side is negative $369,200. And for our counterparty, if we just flipped these two around, we would end up finding out that their uh, value on this is just a positive $369,200. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more content just like it. Thank you for watching.